Hello, YouTube. Hi, right, I'm actually uh, getting some work done on my car and just thought I'd take a moment um, to pass on some information that might be critical for those of you who are without power or may be without power very soon. Evidently, a lot of people here realize that and grabbed up all the batteries. <laughs> the, the ones that would be most suitable, at least. Um, I'm in the automotive department at Walmart and just wanted to go over the materials you would need. Sadly, um, you're going to have to make some adaptations be if you were at this particular Walmart. Because the, the batteries you really want, if you had to pick them off the shelf like really quick, um, are RV batteries. They're um, called Deep Cycle, and they're meant to be used for powering systems like an RV, like a battery pack. But as you can see, the, the shelf here is mostly empty because a hurricane came through or it looked like it might hit. And we are in the middle of hurricane season. So people are grabbing all these things because I guess a lot of people already know how to make it. But if you don't know how to do it, this is what you need. You basically need a battery. Um, this one is an RV, not an RV battery, but it says a marine, starting marine battery, which I think would be better than a regular um, car automotive battery but even an automotive battery would work in an emergency the, the thing about it is that these aren't designed to to like uh, be have the power drawn out like you know over a long time they're meant for like quick quick cranking with high power and recharging back up whereas the rv batteries which you can see are all gone okay because people bought them up because of the the crisis going on with power right now um they're designed to drain the battery power over time. But essentially what you need, okay, if you don't know anything at all, you can go into the automotive section and get one of those jump starters. They cost anywhere from $70 to $120, and they may have a, a small power inverter in it. But the problem with those jump starter battery packs, they contain like a 35 amp hour um, lead acid battery, which means you have about 10 to 15 amp out, 10 to 12 amp hours of usable power before they drain out and you can't use them and they take a long time to recharge they could take like 10 or 12 hours to recharge some of them allow you to recharge by um, hooking it up on the vehicle like you're going to jump start it but having the vehicle run it'll recharge it that way but a lot of them i've seen lately they block that feature you know they they make it so you can't recharge that way and that means you have to plug through 120 volt access um, and a house current, you know, like uh, on grid, which you wouldn't have. That's why you have the battery pack. So we're going to show you how to make one from scratch. So essentially you need a, a battery, like a 12-volt battery, okay? Preferably an RV or a deep cycle battery. You also need a case to hold it. Um, you know, the, the, the case here costs about $8 at Walmart. Uh, it's just basically a battery case. You put the battery in there, and it has a top that go on it. And that's just so you can carry it and you know, keep it sealed, okay? But you're going to make like a portable one that you can carry. And you get these batteries. Most of the batteries, most of these full-size automotive batteries or RV batteries, have like a rating on top of them. I'm going to try to show it on here. It'll tell you how much power it has and stuff. But the, the part that you really want to look at is see how that's a 70 amp hours? This particular battery, when it's new and fully charged, only has 70 amp hours. But because it's lead acid, you only have like 35 amp hours available, 37 amp hours. You have half the capacity of whatever it says in amp hours. So even though it says 30, I mean 70, you actually have 35. Like the, the portable jump packs say they have 30, typically 25 to 35 amp hour batteries, but you can only use about 10 amp hours. So this is already more powerful, but still pretty weak. On average, you can say most of the, the RV batteries will have about roughly 100 amp hours so out of that 50 amp hours usable okay so once you get the battery and the um the case the next thing you're going to want to do is have the ability to hook it up so that it can charge things up like your cell phone and stuff so you come over to this side here where they have all the the wiring and stuff and you want to look for something like this either this one which is seven dollars is a 12 volt power outlet and what it does is on the back, you know, it's got a red and a black line. And what you do is you wire, you can use like alligator clips or whatever. They sell like clips and stuff around here too. I don't know if it's here in another section. But basically, or you could wire it to one of these like nuts or whatever, one of these, you know, bolt thingies. 
and screw it onto the RV battery. But basically, you put red to red, which is positive, and black to black. And this is a 12 volt dual battery outlet, which is the same as the, the automotive battery or the RV battery, which is 12 volts. So it, that's all there is to it. And then what you have is um, on this one, you end up with like two cigarette lighters. And you can put in like a USB port adapter, you know, like the one with two, one or two adapters in it, and you can charge up USB devices. What's really nice about this one is, even when it's hooked up, it doesn't draw any power, so you don't you don't have any phantom power loss. Okay, but instead of getting this, if you wanted to get one with built-in USB, where did I get this from? I mean, where I put this off? Okay. So, uh, so they have some here with built-in USB, one for uh, $9.96. So it has a 12-volt one, which is like a regular cigarette lighter, or um, two USB ports. Now, this, this makes it easier in that you can put this here, and oh, hey, it has USB, so you have to just plug in your USB device. But it's actually less preferable for this one to use this kind than this. And the reason is um, this 12-volt, I mean, not 12-volt, this USB port here, is continually on when you when you hook it into the 12 volt battery of your, you know the automotive battery pack that we just made, uh, and what that will do is do what's called like phantom power loss. So you don't drain the battery up slow. It won't drain fast, but it'll drain it slowly, even if nothing's hooked up. So you can do this for convenience, or if you prefer, which this is a better route, get one of these with the two adapters on it. So then um, you can plug in, you know, the cigarette lighter USB adapters for charging your cell phone. If you want to go really cheap, which I don't think it's worth it, you, for $5, you can get a single port. It's the same thing. It's just one port instead of two. But you're like, well, you know, so you have two ports. Uh, what if you need more than two ports? Well, they have these adapters on here. If, if they sell them here right now, I'm looking. I don't. Uh, maybe this one? Yeah. So this one gives you two more, which is bad. Some of them give you three or four. But this one gives you two more, but it basically has a cigarette port that you would plug into this. So now you have one, two, three outlets, three outlets to use. So that's how you can get like three outlets. But um, they also have some that are, I don't see any here. I don't see any here, but they have some that are like flat that have like four, three ports on them. So if you plug that into one of these, you could have like four or five ports free. And you're like, why would you need so many ports? Well, those ports are important because remember, you're, you're creating a, a power pack that's gonna help you through a hurricane or whatever if the electric company goes down. And it won't be enough to power your house, but it can run stuff like, um, let's see if they have it here. This, which can be a lifesaver if you're in a place like Florida. And when I say this, what I'm talking about are these. These are little portable 12 volt fans, okay? Um, and they're like $13 at Walmart and they plug directly into a cigarette lighter. They run directly off the 12 volts. And these are uh, slightly less than one amp. Let me try to find the, the amp rating on it. Let's see if you can find it on here. Here it goes. Usually on, on most electrical devices, it tells how much power draw it has. And the back of this says it has a, it is um, 0.8 amps, 12 volts at 0.8 amps, 10 watts. So when it says um, 12 volts DC, 0.8 amps, that's less than one amp, but we're gonna round it up to one amp. So that means in one hour, this thing will use up one amp hour. You know, use one amp for the battery. Remember we were looking at the, uh, the battery ratings and it said like 70 on it. That means it would be five amp hours usable because you can only use half of it. You could run that single fan on that battery pack if it was fully charged for 35 hours before you have to recharge that battery. That's what that means. So if you run two of these fans, you could run it for like 15 hours. That's just kind of simplifying how it works, okay? As long as you're not having to do conversion where you're converting from 12 volts to 120 volts to run appliances and stuff. That gets a little bit more complicated, but we're gonna talk about it if you really want that feature. So that's your basic uh, power. What that would give you is 12 volt uh, DC power that you can use to charge up your cell phone, um, your touch tablet, you know, your electronic devices that can charge through 12 volts or run off 12 volts or um, USB. Now you might be saying, why is he talking about this kind of power system? 
It's the because. Electronics, you have a call on line one, please. Sorry about that. We're, we're in Walmart, so sorry about that, the interruptions there. But um, the reason we're going very simple with this is uh, the fact that most people who are listening to this probably have access to a car. And by using basically a car battery as your battery pack, you can just get jumper cables, just regular automotive jumper cables. I'm going to go to the automotive section here to show you how you charge things up and modify the system to make it a little bit more complicated and more usable. But essentially, you could um, get a regular jumper cable. Any of these jumper cables here, like they even have a really cheap one here for 10 bucks. And you could take the jumper cable and hook the battery pack, you know, the red to the red on your automotive battery and the black to the black on your automotive battery to the battery pack. And when you start the car up, it'll charge up it'll charge up your your battery pack using your car's alternator just like it charges up your car's battery and what that allows you to do is recharge your battery every day so you can use your power and recharge it and it doesn't take that long to recharge that pack it could take usually about 15 minutes at the most 15 20 minutes of running your car that beats using one of these pre-made packs these are the pre-made packs that i was telling you about if you really don't know anything and you don't want to put anything together, you can buy a pack for about 89 to 100 bucks. They're smaller, and what they are basically a battery pack with the USB converter on it, a flashlight, jump starter, and they usually have uh, air compressors. So these are useful for carrying as emergency um, devices in your car. But if you're trying to run like um, a system when the power's down, these will work, but they take too long to recharge if they don't allow you to charge by hooking it up to um, the, the vehicle battery and running the car. I, I had a unit that allowed me to do that so I could charge the pack in like five or ten minutes. But some of these new ones, I don't think they allow that. Uh, so they, they run roughly a hundred dollars, but the capacity on it is usually only about, you got about 10 to 15 amp hours of battery life. And that's why I suggest building your own, where if you get a battery pack that has um, 100 amp hours, you get 50 hours of usable time on it. So that's like five times more than this. Now, the good thing about these is they usually have what's called an inverter. And I'm going to show you what an inverter looks like here at Walmart. Um, they may be hard to find because, of course, we're dealing with this in the middle of a hurricane. <laughs> so people have bought all these up. But this is where we start to get things a little bit more complicated. So you have a 12-volt system that allows you to directly hook up 12-volt fans, 12-volt appliances, and you can recharge it using the car's um, alternator, just like you would your, your battery, by using a jump start cable. Okay, so that's your basic battery pack. Now we're going to make it a little bit more complicated by adding 120-volt. I mean, 120-watt access. Not 120 watt, 120 volts. That's, uh, it's 120 watt continuous, but it's 115, 120 um, volts, which is like standard American household appliance. And um, these are called inverters. And what they will do is take the 12 volt battery pack and convert the output. See how this even has a cigarette um, plug here? You can plug it in and it'll convert that 12 volts to 115 to 120 um, volts. So you could plug in like normal. TVs and things that use 115, 120 volts, American stuff. But on those on those devices, they'll also have a watt rating. Like this one says only 120 watts, which allows you to go through the cigarette lighter port. But if you're going to go more than 120 watts, which you probably will, you, you don't really want to go through the cigarette lighter port. It'll heat up and melt. You want, it'll have a, a jumper cable like this on the inverter or you hook it up to the inverter, and you hook up red to the red battery terminal, black to the black battery terminal. Uh, this one will do 400 watts, which for an emergency system, you know, if you don't have a lot of money and you just need something that can run one rice cooker, this is what I would recommend, a 400 watt unit. It's, it sells for $30 at Walmart. And the reason is that it'll handle up to 400 watts, but the problem is um, that you can't go higher than that and the rice cooker that I use a small little portable rice cooker is only 300 watts So it'll work fine under this, but if you want to go a little bit more advanced have a little bit more money You can get this one which is a 750 watt one 
for fifty dollars. This is the one I have in my vehicle, seven hundred fifty. And the reason I went with this one is because it'll let me run two um, rice cookers because the rice cookers are three hundred watts. Two times three hundred is six hundred, so I can run two rice cookers at the same time. And um, it'll also allow me to run stuff like an electric drill, an electric jigsaw. So I can run power tools from my battery pack. Now the problem is um, when you run like 300 watts, 700 watts, whatever, you drain the battery really, really fast. So if you were going to do something like that, ideally you have your battery hooked up to your vehicle all the time, to, you know, to the um, vehicle starter battery and you have the engine running so that the battery is charging while you're running your device that's draining it so fast. So this will convert um, 12 volts to 120 volts. That's what you want. You can go even higher and get a 1,000 watt, which is starting to cost a little bit more. This is a 1,500 watt, and this is $140. And you're like, why, why would you go something this high? Something like this might be big enough to power a microwave oven. So you have to look at the electrical appliance and on the um, where the power plug goes in, it, it'll say how many watts it needs. And most uh, microwaves, the small little ones, are like 700 watts, but they peak at about 1600. This may or may not work, okay? Because this is 1500 watts, but I think it'll handle up to 3000 peak. Let's, let's take a look. Usually it's like double. I think it'll go up to 3000 peak. But, but this will allow, this one should probably allow you to run a microwave, but to play it safe, you probably want one for 2,000 watts. But I know some of you are like, well, we would get that one. But see, the, the more watts you use, the larger your battery bank, bank is going to have to be because you're draining the battery really, really, really fast. And some of you may not know what I mean when I say really fast. I mean, remember the, the big battery that I told you about, the automotive or the um, RV battery? If you hook that up to one of these things and you run a microwave, you can only run the microwave for three minutes for uh, about three or four meals. So you can cook, you know, mostly when you cook food in the microwave, you're running it for like three minutes. You can make like three or four meals and then the battery's totally draining. and you can't use it anymore. It's too weak. That's how fast that thing runs out. And that's why when, when you saw the, the living in the van vehicles where I'm driving around and cooking and stuff, I'm doing it while the car's running. And the reason I'm doing it while the car's running is um, the, the device here, the inverter, will convert my 12 volts to 120 volts, which can run my rice cooker, which is a 300 watt. This is 400 watt output. Um, it'll run 300 watts, but it's training the battery like really fast. So by having it hooked up to the alternator, which if you want to learn that, you want to watch the van build series and the cooking with Denoy where I show how I set up the whole cooking system and everything. <laughs> but basically it allows the battery to charge and then the, the inverter continues to pull the power while you use it. And that's pretty much the basics of it. Um, you can put in fuses and stuff for safety. I, I'm not even covering that right now. But this is just for like a really quick build. If you had to put something together in one day, and we're talking about less than an hour, you could buy the battery. Just make sure to keep things simple. Get a 12 volt battery, preferably an RV. They call it a deep cycle RV battery. And the more amps, you know, when you see the little tag on it, tells how many amp hours. The more amp hours it has, the better. But most of them have about 100, 115 amp hours. And out of that, you can be able to use about 50 to 60 amp hours. Because at halfway point, the battery is considered not really usable. It needs to recharge. And if you go below halfway, the battery will die and not charge anymore. So you're destroying the batteries. And for those of you who don't remember, it's usually printed right on the battery what the amp hours are. This is uh, 70. I hope you found this helpful. Um, like I said, the videos have already been done. If you want to look at them, they should be on the um, uh, Van Build or the Cook Denoy. I don't know if I have all those back on a playlist or not. But if I do not, I will make sure I get them on the playlist so you can look them up. But that will help you with getting a battery pack. And if you put it in your car, you can easily jump start it. I mean, not jump start it. Um, hook up a jump start cable. You know, the the jumper cable, red to red, black to black, 
and start up your car and recharge the battery every day so that you always have a full pack. And then um, if you need to, on your, your inverter, remember the device that converts 12 volts to 120 volts, you can hook up an extension cord, counter, please. which they don't Customer have in the automotive help, please, in They don't have it in the automotive section, but they have it in the housewares section. They have um, multi-plug outlets with extension cord on it. Let me try to find one. Let's see, where are we? All these Walmarts look similar, but they're not exactly the same. So, you get an extension cord and you'd run the power, you'd hook it up to the battery bank and take the extension cord and run it inside your house or whatever. And I did that um, when we had like, we had like three hurricanes hit Florida, one right after another. <laughs> it was a couple of years back. It hit central Florida where I am three of them like within a um a one month period or something like that but power was out like forever and it was dark and my house had lights and everything we had tv we had dvd we had fans running um and what i did was i i basically had a power pack inside my car that i was charging up i'm trying to find um the extension cord which i don't see here for some reason maybe i'm in the wrong section Maybe I'm in the wrong section. They do have fans here. Um, these are... Oh, this is pretty neat. This is a USB fan. Huh. It says, um, soft blade, small USB fan. USB fans will take up even less power. Maybe I might get one just because it's on sale for $9. I wonder how powerful it is. It says, um... First off, that's a Spanish side. <laughs> It says, it's a portable fan. You can use a battery or USB power source. Um, soft blades. I guess that means the blade, if you hit it, it won't cut through you. Uses USB power, has two speeds, high or low. Touch control, you tap the power once to turn on high speed, two times for low, and again to turn it off. There's a touch control on it. Looks like a very small little device, but it didn't tell the power usage. But I can tell you, USB is going to be tiny. Most, most USB, I guess it's, um, it says it uses 5 volts at 0 0.5 amps. So half an amp at 5 volts. So it'll have a converter to down convert that to 12 volts to 5, but only uses like half an amp. So this is like much less power than the, um, the automotive 12 volt fan i haven't tried one of these so i don't know how powerful they are if they're any good i don't know if i want to buy one because i'm trying to get rid of stuff so i don't know if i want to buy one just to test it out but this is a potential option i don't know how well they work because i've never used them so i can't vouch for them but usb will use um here's a metal four inch usb fan metal this might even be a better buy look at this three dollars and fifty cents and it runs off usb it's small it's like half the size of um the other kind and then cali venture says i should test it and bring it back if not i don't want to really take their stuff and then open it up and use it and then bring it back and the the problem is i have um you know those those automotive 12 volt fans i have like six or ten of them i have three or I know, four or five in the rv because i got a whole bunch in all the different rooms in the bathroom and I have three inside the van. And the, re the reason I, I generally go with the 12 volts, some people say, well, you should go USB, it'll conserve more power. The thing is, when you have enough power, you don't need to conserve. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? I have pretty much unlimited 12 volt power, especially now that I have solar panels that generate um, enough power to run all the devices and charge the battery completely at night. I mean, during the daytime. So that when the sun sets, I'm entering the night with a full battery bank. And I can run I can run three fans, I can watch TV, I can do almost as much stuff as I want at night, you know, using electricity. I can play video games. Um, I don't know if I can play all night, I haven't tried it. Because the, the TV that I have hooked up, you know, in the, the, 
the RV and the van, they're um, LED TV, so they don't use a lot of power, even though they're 120 volts. So there's some power loss in converting 12 volts to 120 volts. So, you know, that that's the reason you want to use 12 volt uh, appliances if possible. But if you can go, go USB, you really, really can stretch that power pack. Remember the, the power pack? Okay, here's a scenario. You don't have a clue what the heck you're doing and you don't want to build, okay? You just want to grab a pack. Now, this becomes important. This becomes very important because this is USB. Very low power, okay? Very, USB generally one-tenth, one-half to one-tenth the power of a 12-volt appliance equivalent. So I would get these little fans, two or three of them, instead of the 12 volts. If I wasn't building my own battery pack, if I decided to buy one of these pre-made packs for anywhere from $69 to $100 from Walmart, okay, and let's just go over um, the 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 power pack and um, what they actually include. It, it's just for those people who don't want to build or don't have time to build, and you just want to grab something off the shelf for use emergency. Um, Basically, these are really cool because they're jump starters, too. So, you know, it's not like just a power pack. You use it. You put it in your car, and you just check to make sure it's charged, you know, every so often, like maybe once a month, make sure it's charged. But you have it charged and ready to go so that when you, you have no power, this is your power, okay? Hopefully, these units allow you to um, charge them by hooking up the, the jump start to the battery, you know, your automotive battery, and running your car and recharge it that way. Some do, some do not. It's a matter of buying it and trying it out, okay? Hopefully you get one that does that because it allows you to recharge the thing in 15 minutes. Otherwise, you have to hook it up to 120 volts and then you have to charge it for like 10 hours. That's When you have to do that, it's kind of almost useless, okay? So it's best to build your own pack. But if you don't have the, the skills, you get something like this. This one will go to 750 amps peak. That, that's for jump starting. Here's one that's 1,000 amps peak, so maybe a little bit more powerful. But look at the prices. I don't know if this is an actual, but this is true. They really lowered it. If that's the correct price, I'd grab one of these for that price, $39. I think I bought it for um, 89 or 100 and I bought it for like 89 or $98. The same one. So let me look on it and see if that's the correct. It says 750 amp jumper. Heck yeah. I would buy this. <laughs> they, they cut the price like more than half. So in an emergency, yeah, for 40 bucks, I'd grab this. I don't need it. That's why I'm not grabbing it. But this one has, let's see, it has um, air compressor. It's got USB ports up to 2.1 amp power. Uh, so you can automatically recharge stuff. You can also run those fans. Um, it does not have a direct, I think they removed some stuff, that's why it's cheaper. It doesn't have the 12 volt plug. It, it doesn't have the 12 volt, um, socket, you know, for 12 volt devices. That's why the price went down. But I bought one of these that has a 12 volt socket, has lights, has all sorts of stuff on it. But this would be a cheap unit, $40. You could have something real cheap to use, but you don't have, um, you don't have 12 volts, which to me is bad. You don't have 12 volts. This one here, you have USB output, you have a built-in light, micro USB charge port. It doesn't say you have 12-volt access either. It looks like they did away to cut to save some money. They did away with 12-volt um, plugs. They're giving, you, they're giving you USB plug, but not 12 volts, which to me makes it bad because then you can't run a big fan or something. Here's another one, and once again, they removed the 12 volts. All they give you are USB ports. So I guess the new trend, the new trend for these power packs now is not to have you use 12 volt appliances, but to have you use USB appliances. Uh, some of you might be wondering what, what what's up with like these little ones, like these like little jump starter packs and stuff like that. These aren't bad. Um, they're actually like better batteries in there. They got like lithium ion. That's why they cost so much. But um, they work the same, and they allow you to charge USB devices. The thing about lithium ion, you can train that all the way down to zero. So if it says it's, I'm trying to see how many amp hours it has. 
I don't think it tells you how many amp hours. They, they said lithium batteries with 37 watt hours, but that's not amp hours. I don't know what it, watt hours are. Timothy might be able to explain the difference between amp hours and watt hours. I don't know what they are, but I don't think that's 37 amp hours. It's 37 watt hours, which I don't know what that is. But um, this will allow you to charge like your cell phone and stuff like that. But the problem is a lot of the, well, and actually this one will jump start. Can, it can make so much power it can jump start your battery. But I suspect that it won't let you charge it by hooking it up and going the other way. Which means to charge this one, you have to have a 120 volt um, adapter and plug it in and charge it that way. And it could take hours or days to charge it back up. That's why it's better to build your own. That's a 12 volt system that works with your 12 volt car system that you can recharge with a battery cable, you know, battery jumper. And then these are nice, like I said, but they've, they've eliminated the 12 volt access, which to me is like a deal breaker. I mean, you can wire it yourself and do all sorts of weird stuff. What's good about them, though, is they do include, uh, see how it has 120 volts on there? They include the, the inverter that we were talking about. So this device, one of these, is built into that. But the problem that you have with these pre-built units is that the, see this one? It'll go up to 500 watts. That's not bad, actually. 500 watts of um, AC, that's 120 volt power. That means this particular unit here, could run a rice cooker. The problem you're going to have is I'm looking at it and I can see that looking at the pack here and feeling the weight, it doesn't have as much battery storage, you know, energy storage as an RV battery. And if you try to run a rice cooker on this, it might drain the whole battery before you cook your rice because it takes about 15 minutes to cook the rice. And I don't know if it's possible to recharge this through that. Because if it is, what you do is you run you run a, um, a red line from the positive on your vehicle battery to this clipper. And you run a black line from your automotive battery to this clipper. So you have a connection between this to the vehicle battery red, black to the vehicle battery black. Or you could run the black to the metal frame of your vehicle and ground it. And that will complete the circuit. And when your car is running, it will charge this thing back up. Of course, that's just a theory. <laughs> I did it on this one and it worked. Not this particular one, but the one the the one that I bought for like eighty nine dollars or whatever before they removed all those extras. But yeah, um, something to consider. And the time to do this kind of thing is before a hurricane or an earthquake or a fire or some other disaster hits, where you have to hop in your vehicle and get the heck out of Dodge. So, you know, I know some of you are like, well, I'll do it later. I recommend that if you're not in a crisis situation and your local store has the batteries and stuff in stock and all the items that you need, that's the kind of time you want to take to do this stuff. <laughs> it's a preparation for an emergency. And um, once you get all the materials, you know, this should not take that long. You can watch my videos or you can Google or YouTube, you know, on YouTube, if you search YouTube, portable battery pack, a homemade DIY or how to make a, a 12 volt battery pack or a, a portable battery pack. People will show you and it's pretty much the same items that I showed you, but I, you know, they may use different items, but different models and different things. But essentially you have a battery that you hook up 12 volt output, USB output. And um, maybe if you want to go a little bit more advanced, you have an inverter that converts the 12 volts to 120 volts. I hope you found this uh, information useful. I know it's hard to build something if you don't see it. The videos do exist. I've got like two or three versions of it. Uh, I have the vehicle system um, that's built directly into the car, you know, the van. And I also have a portable one that I used that I used to lug around to the woods when I was building that house or the hut. Do you remember that? If you if you follow this channel, you know that big hut that I built. It was like a two or three hundred square foot house, <laughs> two hundred at least two hundred square feet. The hut that I built out in the woods, that was built with power from from a battery pack that I built. You know exactly like I described to you. I took the uh, RV battery. Actually, I had an automotive battery. I had the battery pack. I had a, um, a seven hundred and fifty watt inverter. And I was able to take my jigsaw out there, my drill, and I was able to cut and do stuff. 
Now, granted, I couldn't run it all day long. It would only do enough for like maybe about 15, 20 cuts, you know, of wood beams and stuff before I had to recharge the battery because the, the jigsaw used like six or 700 watts. And I would start it for, you know, like 10, 15 seconds and shut it off. So, um, it, you know, it's not the most ideal because the, the battery pack's not that powerful, but it was good enough to build that hut. And what I did was when the, the power ran out, I, you know, took it back to the vehicle and charged it up the way I'm telling you with the jumper cord, jumper cables. So uh, if you have any questions, make sure you, you post it down below the videos. I am going to go ahead and um, read your comments here. Uh, Callie Venture wants to know if I'm working on the game. Uh, the plan is to work on the game, but right now I've got I got all these other things going on. Like you know, I'm trying to get my retirement and all that set up. And still dealing with um, the different embassies. That's what's been kind of like keeping me really busy right now, just dealing with all that and trying to get um, retirement set up and also work out the finances. I'm debating if I want to keep working for the next couple months or if I want to just, it's, you know, quit and then just uh, retire early before I actually travel. But I'm, I'm thinking I might stay. It's just more money. The The issue I'm going to have is um has to do with, you know, I'm living in the RV right now and the snowbirds are all going to come here soon. And what happens is a lot of the RV parks and campgrounds and things like that that you have to reserve, the snowbirds, they reserve like one or two years in advance. <laughs> That's how far out they go. So the this place where I'm staying right now, in a couple months, they're full. They're going to kick me out. So I'm going to be in the RV with no place to park. And some of you might say that's not really that big a deal because you have the RV. The RV is off-grid capable. It is a big deal because I'm working. That's what the big problem is. The problem is I have a job, you know, and I have to go to work Monday through Friday. I can't just leave the RV anywhere. So what I'm looking at right now is potentially finding another place where I can, you know, pay rent basically to park the RV. Um, or if I couldn't get back to the storage like I had before, that was really good. It was the most economical, you know, was paying for the storage and the guy was kind enough to let me use the, um, the RV during the daytime, even though I couldn't sleep there at night. But it meant I could use it to cook, I could, you know, play video games, I could chill for a couple hours after I got off work. Uh, then I would go sleep in the van. But Honestly, right now, once once I get the RV cleaned up a little bit more, I want to show you what it's like in there. It's like a contrast from what I've been experiencing in the van because the RV is like a mansion. It's like huge. And, you know, I have, um, I can stand up and walk around. I have a nice soft bed. I can, I can take a shower in the RV if I want to. I have a working flushable toilet in the RV. I have um, internet and TV. I have all the stuff that a house would have. You know, um, so it's like a big, huge change from, um, you know, being in a tiny little van. But at the same time, the cost is basically rent, the cost of rent. Let me just scroll on through here. And it says, any truckloads and truckloads? I don't know. Okay. Okay. Okay, SD Bob thinks that AA Angry was a fake one. Possibly. Probably posting some nasty stuff. <laughs> SD Bob <laughs> was hammering with the 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 um the wrench. Um, I'm just scrolling through here. Yeah, that uh, the rice cooker. I don't know if you, you were like in Walmart. Uh, the the rice cooker is like really affordable. Some of you wonder why I don't use like a um, full-blown pressure cooker and stuff like that. And I go with the little tiny rice cooker. It has to do with the number of watts. Okay. Remember we were talking about the the power inverter and how many watts that will output? My, my vehicle, my van, will go up to 750 watts. It, most most full-blown cooking appliances, they require 1,200 to 1,600 watts. So you can see it's already more than um, my 750 watts will handle. But not only is it more, 
the bigger those numbers are, the fast. It, it looks like I'm pointing at the ground because I don't want to show other people. Kind of respect the privacy here, but um, basically, let's just walk around Walmart. <laughs> you guys like walking around Walmart for van dwellers? This is like a, this is like a regular. This this is like a regular site. <laughs> I don't know if you know, I don't know if they still do this. I, I don't know if you guys know, but Walmart, when I was working at Walmart, all of their pictures that you see in Walmart, like their advertising and stuff, are actually Walmart employees or their families. Yeah, they don't pay models. They actually take the um, Walmart employees and um, they use pictures. Even the ones where they model all the stuff, like the... The clothes and stuff like that. You know when they have the posters and things that have the advertising for Walmart? It's actual Walmart employees. I don't know if you have to apply for that somehow. Or how much they pay. If they pay modeling fees. Now this is great because so I don't think this is Walmart. But like the Walmart type stuff that you see where you see the Walmart advertising. It's Walmart employees. Um, I'm looking here. And I'm in the, I don't know why I'm in the kids section. Somehow I missed housewares. <laughs> you know you know what I found the other day that, that was interesting? They had those rice cookers in the grocery department. They had it right there on, on the end cap. You know, that's the edge, the end of the, um, the aisle. And they had a whole bunch of racks or a shelving full of rice cookers. I'm like, huh, these things are selling like hotcakes if they're putting them out like that. Because I guess people have discovered the, uh, the power of the rice cooker. Just scrolling through your stuff here. Miguel wants to know about solar panels. Um, I showed it in the past, but maybe I'll talk about it again. When when I was first getting into solar panels, it was so confusing and everything to me. But it turns out it's really not as bad as um, as it might seem. Although maybe I'm doing it wrong. I don't know, right or wrong, it seems to be working fine on my van and seems to be working fine on my RV. So keep in mind that everything I'm sh I'm showing you and telling you about, I'm not an expert. I'm just making this stuff up, and it works. It's not like I'm making it up blindly. I, I do re a little bit of research and stuff, but um, I'm not like an expert. So I don't claim to be an expert. I don't claim to be an electrician. I don't claim to be a solar expert. But um, I know just enough information to make it work. And I try to share that um, because, you know, typically the stuff that I do, it's like hacks. It's like um, Jimmy rigging things to make things work. Because the, the real way to make it work, according to a lot of the channels and stuff, you have to buy all these things that cost like two or three hundred dollars just for connectors. You could you could spend two to three hundred dollars on solar panel connectors, and that's just little plastic connectors. And denoise method, you spend zero dollars. You just cut the wire and you hook the wire together directly. <laughs> now you do destroy the connector i don't i don't know what happened to houseware i like skipped houseware around this this one but basically the way i do stuff i'll cut the um the cable remove the tip that requires because the solar panel connectors they have like weird tips that have this interlocking you know one side is male one the other end is female and they plug in together but it's a weird specialized plug and um here's houseware i think so i don't even know what we're looking we're looking for rice cookers and i don't i don't see the rice cookers and stuff around here it's weird so anyhow um my method we just cut the tip off and we say which one's positive we hook positive up to positive negative up to negative now from what i know um when you hook up and i've seen like really poor countries like uh, in India and stuff they will take a solar panel <coughs> a a solar panel and they'll take the wire and they will wire it directly to a battery to charge the battery now I don't know enough about it to know if that's safe you know if it'll damage the connectors or anything but they do it like that me I run it through the inverter not the inverter the um what do they call those? The charge controllers. They have basically, as far as I know, two main types of charge controllers. One's called like PWM, which is the older technology. I think it's like pulse width modulation. 
but what it'll do is convert the uh, the power from the solar panel to match the power in the battery, you know, the voltage and stuff, and let the the battery charge. Now, PWM is an older technology, and supposedly there's a lot more loss. Like if you, if you produce more power, it just gets lost with heat. You know, if you produce more power on the solar panels than you can use, I think it just loses it. And then you have uh, the newer technology called um, MPPT, which um, will actually take that power and change it. So they'll change it to like the the flow rate and stuff like that. I don't I'm, I don't know enough about it, but I do know that MPPT generally is more efficient than PWM, but it also costs more. And from my experience and discovery on this channel, on, on working both within um, PWM and MPPT controller, I have a PWM controller hooked up to the system in the van. That charge controller was only $15 or less. The PWM cheap one, it's like plastic, it seems like a toy. Like $15, it's been working great. I have more than enough power coming in on my solar panels to fully charge the battery bank every day. I can even cook without running my engine. I can have the vehicle parked as long as it's sunny. And my um, my solar panel is 250 watts, 255 watts, which is less than 300 watts. So keep that in mind. The, the solar panel is less than 300 watts, which is what the rice cooker uses. So that means when you're running the rice cooker to make up the extra 45 watts, the um, system has to pull power from the house battery. So that means if you kept running the rice cooker, eventually it would um, drain the battery down and the system would shut down. But it would take so long because um, while you're cooking, the system's charging back up. All right. Connor, your is I, I was listening for my name. <laughs> it's like, oh, time to go. But anyhow, um, yeah. So, you know, basically the 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 PWM, I would actually recommend that for a cheap little system. You could get a um, battery bank. You know, the the battery pack that I talked about for about a hundred dollars, one hundred and fifteen dollars, maybe maybe with the inverter and everything. Let's go one hundred and fifty dollars. One hundred and fifty dollars for the power pack with 120 volt um, battery inverter for 750 watts. That's very good. So $150 for that. Um, solar panels, if you get them used from solar wholesale, you can get like um, the 255 watt one for probably about um, 70 or $80 or less. And then um, wiring. You could get wiring for about ten, fifteen dollars from um, Home Depot or something, or I think we're 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 boycotting Home Depot now, so you have to go to Lowe's. <laughs> so basically, that's all it would take to hook that up, and you would have a, a fully functional system that can run a um, LCD TV or LED TV, um, three fans at night. Well, actually, to run the three fans and the whole system the way I have it, you have to have a second battery bank. So not just one battery bank. So add about another $85 to the cost. That gives me um, 200 amp hours of battery storage with 100 amp hours usable. And that, I find, is more than adequate for a van. If you have 200 amp hours with 100 usable, you have enough to run um, the rice cooker, the... You can't run air conditioning, but you can run fans, you can run the TV, you can run everything else. Just scrolling through here. It looks like uh, you, that's pretty much it. Um, did you guys have any other questions before I sign out here? Or do you just want to let me keep filming Walmart? <laughs> the reason I'm, I'm filming right now, I'm not too much worried about it, is um, we're actually using Walmart's Wi-Fi. So... This is another little tip. If you need Wi-Fi access, <laughs> you know how I keep running out of data and then it starts the image starts breaking up and doing all sorts of weird crap? It's because I'm on Wi-Fi data. I'm on cellular data, and I'm actually capped. So when I do those driving episodes where I'm talking and stuff, I'm actually using a lot of data. But here at this Walmart right now, I'm actually tapped into the Walmart public Wi-Fi and using their Wi-Fi to broadcast. So I can live stream 
and not worry about data law, you know, data usage. Unless Walmart says, hey, we're going to cap him. He's using too much. Because, you know, they're monitoring everything I'm doing right now. Guy says he's thinking of getting a gateway laptop from Walmart. Heard they're affordable and good. I've never had experience with it. But, um, you know, generally what I find with uh, spending money on stuff like laptops and things like that, um, computers have gotten to the point where they're, like, almost disposable. You know, it's like within two years, they're outdated, and you have to get the new model. So I generally don't buy, like, the high-end stuff. I will buy, like, um, the cheaper ones. I look at this. What I try to look at, it's not just the specification, but the application I'm trying to run. And whether or not the hardware will support that. And I don't play like a lot of high end games, you know, that are like 3D graphic intensive with that require a 3D video effects graphics card or something like that. So I won't spend the money on that. You know, most of the games I play are like <laughs> I'm running an Atari emulator playing Adventure, you know, or something like that. And you can even play a lot of these games in browser. You don't even have to install any software. You just visit the website oh, uh, and, and you can run that thing. We're, we're actually over at the cool section of Walmart. This is the, the section that Van Dwellers like, you know, the um, camping and survival type gear. Let's see what they have here. Try to see what they have if they have anything new with them um, looking at because I haven't been looking here in a long time. This has some kind of drinking thing. Is this drinking or cooling? I don't know. It's got a pipe in it. Hydro pack. I guess this has water in it. You can sip water. <laughs> and to, to get that feature, you pay $35. For me, I'd rather just carry a bottled water and just tilt the water and drink. But here, if you want to, you have a little sippy straw. I suppose there's probably a bag in here somewhere to hold water. $35 for that feature. Here's a three liter uh, reservoir for holding water. I think these are collapsible. So they're basically collapsible bags that you carry water in. What I find interesting about this kind of stuff, like this is a three liter one that you're paying $17. A two liter one that you're paying eleven forty seven for. And a lot of people will buy these, but me, I just take a soda bottle that's two liter and I fill it with water. And if I really need to tie it around me, I just put a piece of rope or something on it and wear it around like a giant canteen versus spending eleven dollars. I get a free bottle and it has a cap. But I suppose this thing has a, a straw built in so you can drink right out of it. <laughs> 